So one of the most famous kind of kebabs that you can get is a kofta kebab. And the spicing and the flavouring that comes through that is absolutely outstanding. The word kofta has its origins in Iran, where it actually means pound or grind, which is exactly what I'm going to do here with a teaspoon of coriander seeds and a teaspoon of toasted cumin seeds. I'm just going to crush them up. For these koftas, I'm using lamb breast, which comes from the belly of the sheep. And it's got that fantastic ratio of meat to fat. In fact, it's quite fatty, but that is all flavour. And lamb fat is one of the most delicious flavours you can have. It's fantastic. And it goes so well with spicing. When you think of spice straight away, quite often you will think of chilli or you'll think of those hot curries or a vindaloo. But spicing doesn't always mean hot, hot. It can mean fragrant, it can mean fresh. So into this, I'm going to put Raz Halanout. Now, this is very much a Middle Eastern flavour. It's kind of a combination of a number of dried spices ground together. It's a little bit like a Middle Eastern curry powder, but without the heat. I'll add a pinch of salt and pepper and then an ingredient that might surprise you, mint sauce. We associate that with British cooking, don't we? But here, to go into these koftas, it gives a freshness. And mint sauce has that lovely balance between acidity and sweetness. It's got vinegar in it and it's got sugar. So it will just help cut through the fattiness of that kofta mix. For even more flavour, I'm adding a sautéed onion, grated raw garlic and lemon zest. And that lemon zest gives a lovely kind of citrusy kick to it. And it works really well with the mint. And the last thing to go into the kebab, is some freshly chopped herbs. Now here, I've got some parsley and some coriander. Once everything is mixed together, I'll divide it into eight even portions, ready for shaping. The classic kofta kebab. It's a little bit like a lamb sausage, just without the outer skin on it. And the idea of getting them all the same shape and size so that they all cook nice and evenly. And even those little birds agree with me. These guys are now going to go and sit in the fridge for about an hour to firm up before I can stick them onto the barbecue. These lovely kebabs have been sat and chilled in the fridge. And you can see they're quite firm, still a little delicate, but they're good enough to put straight onto the grill now. As they cook, they'll crisp up and form a skin, so it should mean that they're tough enough to be able to move, but not just yet. I'm going to cook these koftas nice and slow on a low to medium heat until they're browned all over. The smell coming off these guys are absolutely amazing. Whilst they cook, I'm going to knock up a vibrant coleslaw. You can get loads of different versions, but I want this one to be light and fresh. Slaws act as one of those kind of contrasts to rich, spicy and meaty foods. They have that kind of freshness and texture and crunch. This coleslaw has crunchy onions and cabbage, aromatic fennel and green chilies for extra heat. Then there's zesty lemon and lime, vibrant pomegranate seeds and a load of mint, warming turmeric, salt and pepper and finally a big dollop of creamy yoghurt. The lovely thing about using yoghurt as opposed to mayonnaise in this slaw is it's, it's looser and it's lighter. It's not as cloyy as mayonnaise. Okay, stick these amazing koftas onto a serving plate. So those are my amazing lamb koftas, served with my Middle Eastern slaw. For the last stop on my spice safari, I'm travelling to India. I'm going to do curried monkfish tails cooked in the barbecue. And Indian spices often get overlooked for barbecuing, but actually, if you think of some of the greatest Indian dishes, they're all cooked in a tandoor which isn't too dissimilar to one of these. I'm starting with my spice mix, warming Madras curry powder, 
turmeric for color, salt, lemon juice, and vegetable oil. Now these colors and flavors, I mean, they're absolutely fantastic. It's gonna bring a bit of sunshine and warmth to our uh, slightly chilly, wet and cold day. Now monkfish is great, particularly for people who don't like bones in their fish. You know, the little pin bones that you're gonna get. Monkfish hasn't got that. It's just got this one great big spine that goes down it. And then you're able to cut it a little bit like, I suppose, carving a leg of lamb or something like that. Monkfish certainly isn't gonna win any beauty contests. It used to be called poor man's lobster because it gave a similar texture on the cheap. But now it's just as pricey, if not more expensive. Sometimes with fish cookery, you have to go quite subtle with it. You don't want to overcook it. It's gentle, it breaks up. Monkfish is so robust, you can treat it just like a steak. So I'm just gonna kind of just paint on this lovely spice mix. And it, it goes so well with monkfish. It's just perfect. So I'm gonna cook these on the barbecue. I've got it up to around about 200 degrees centigrade. And I'm just gonna put the fish on. Whilst that's cooking, I'm gonna knock up a little bit of a salad to go with it, starting with two cucumbers. I scrape out the watery seeds, then chop up the cucumber into little nuggets. And make it one of those classic salads that you get with Indian cookery. I'm adding red onion and cherry tomatoes, keeping them chunky for bursts of freshness and texture. And into that, some mint. Putting mint in a salad gives it a real zesty lift, a proper freshness of flavor. And then the seasoning. Pinch of salt. And then this, teaspoon of chat masala. Well, it's kind of like a, a curry powder, except it's a curry powder with acidity, and it gives it a real fruitiness. If you can't find that chat masala in the normal places where you buy your food, you can get it from the Indian supermarkets. Add a squeeze of lemon juice and mix it all together. Perfect. So after a little while, the fish is beginning to colour, and those spices beginning to blacken, which is exactly what I want. I like to baste the fish with some melted butter for extra flavour. Butter makes everything taste better. So whilst that monkfish is cooking, the spices are toasting and brushing it with butter. It's kind of the fat's dripping down onto the coals, and then it's creating this lovely smoke. So you're getting smoky, toasted spice, and the butter's kind of caramelizing and browning as well. So it's gonna end up with this lovely, wonderful, toasted, curried crust. It's gonna make that monkfish amazing. Turning the fish every so often, they'll take 10 to 15 minutes to be cooked through and golden. And the monkfish is ready, but like a really good piece of meat, I'm not gonna serve it straight away going to leave it to rest. While I whip up a spicy yogurt with cumin, cayenne and turmeric for the final touch. And that's it. So this is the moment of joy. And look at that fish. Succulent, moist, where it's been roasted on the bone. Oh, it just tastes fantastic. It's not spicy hot, like you think of a vindaloo, but those warm Indian spices just are fantastic with this piece of fish. But there's something super special about that barbecue flavor, that smokiness. And I don't know whether it's because I'm out here in the rain and it's a warming spice from curry. Oh, I couldn't think of a better place to be.